Hello there. I'm here with Jude. He got up because he was looking for treats. It's November the 8th and um, it was the Santa snacks he was after. But what initially attracted him was my candy corn, which he would eat if I let him, but then it wouldn't be any good for him, would it? So anyway, um, oh, let's give you a treat here. Um, a Santa snack. It's November the 8th and um, I think the la when I was talking last week I was a bit sick and then I was sick for like the rest of the week and then and then yesterday um, I saw the doctor and they gave me antibiotics so I have a sinus infection but it's amazing like in 24 hours um, how good you can feel <laughs> uh, thanks to the antibiotics and it just got me thinking that on some days they are like um, they're the miracles of modern day life, right? And the fact that an infection, which years and years and years ago would have killed you, um, can now be sort of put right and healed just by taking um, an antibiotic. So thank God for antibiotics. Um, I feel a whole lot better today, so much so um, I've started to eat candy, you know, and have a taste for things which I didn't have before. Uh, anyway, Judas here on my lap. Um, just a couple of things to share with you today. Um, it's, you know, November, so it's a month of the, the Holy Souls. And so I got to reading this book, which somebody, one of you gave me actually. It's called Imagine the God of Heaven. And um, it's sort of a spirituality book, I think. It's got, a, and uh, it's lots of references to the Bible, and it's, a lot, it's, it's quite a good book, really. But what it does is it relates um, the experiences of people who have had what they call a near-death experience. Or, in other words, people who have claimed to have died, but then who've come back and what they experience. You know how you, know, you have that sort of classical experience of people where they see a light or, and they go towards the light and then... You know, the kind of thing which you see in the movies. And anyway, so obviously there's a, a great deal of interest in this kind of thing um, because this is this guy's second book uh, regarding uh, the same experience, near-death experiences. And um, I, I find it interesting. Um, it kind of makes me wonder or ponder my, um, I suppose, how I, how I um, value these kinds of things and there's I've no reason to you know sort of deny or dispute what people are telling me that they all seem very credible you know and a lot of the they, they vary in how people have experienced uh, what they consider near death um, some people will see this overwhelming light and they'll move to the light or they'll experience warmth um, or they'll experience as somebody described uh, Jesus is like they, they see the most beautiful man they've ever seen in their life, a beauty they cannot describe. And, and they have a moment with that and then they leave that and then they come back to life here. Um, I suppose what it does is it kind of challenges my, my belief on, you know, when does life end? And I suppose for me, when I when I, I read these experiences, which are, I, I, they're valuable experiences, uh, I, I question whether they are near-death experiences or are they just religious experiences or are they just mystical experiences? You see, throughout all of history, um, people, especially some of like the very famous saints, they've had encounters um, extreme experiences of great love um, of, of the Lord or of the saints or, or of heaven or of death, almost like foretaste visions, if you like. And, and we just call them mystical experiences or like in the case of St. Teresa of Avila, it was what they call communion, um, that an overwhelming experience of communion where she was transported to another place uh, and other likewise other mystical saints you know St Rose and people like that they've all had those experiences where they found themselves somewhere else and then they've come back 
um, and we just call that um, like a, a mystical experience. Um, but in this modern day, I think maybe, maybe we're calling them um, near-death experiences. I'm not quite sure, but this has given me a lot of food for thought. And do I recommend this book? I think I do, if you're interested in this kind of thing. And to see, well, how does it connect with, you know, the Bible and um, our faith in Jesus Christ? Because when I first started to read this, I was thinking, well, they're, they're not mentioning Jesus. You know, if, if I die, then I want to see Jesus. But then, then people do start to very clearly say that they had experience Jesus in this moment um, of near death and as one person sort of said they, they didn't have words to describe they knew that it was Jesus uh, they could only describe him as like being um, endless compassion or very sort of um, sort of like very very passionate love just they just experienced him in such a way that they didn't have words but they knew it was him and I thought to myself, that's very beautiful, because when we think of Jesus, you know, as being all compassionate, all loving, um, I think that if we, when we finally do actually see him face to face, you know, um, we will just be like completely consumed uh, by the love that he has for us and for the world. And we won't have uh, words for it or needs for words. We'll just experience that all-embracing love uh, which just covers us and, and takes us to him. That's what I'm hoping for and, and I suppose in some ways that the people describing it here <clears throat> describe it in that way. So um, I think if there's any critique I would say about this it would be um, from my Catholic point of view and Christian point of view is that um, uh, can it be possible that we have that a near-death experience does exist or not. I mean, um, because was it death that they really experience if they came back? Because, you know, from what my understanding is, we're either alive or we're dead. And when we die, um, we go into eternity. It's not like Jesus changes his mind or God the Father sort of said, oh no, let's give this guy a bit more time. I don't think it works like that, personally. Um, from my, my standpoint, really, I think that, you know, it's either we die or we live. And maybe this is just another experience of life, um, but in a different way. I mean, so these are just maybe visions or um, connected, obviously, with, with physical, um, you know, sort of manifestations of people kind of like passing out or or a mystical experience of God, but um, can it be, is my question, can it be that um, they are near-death experiences if we're still alive? Um, of course, you know, I believe that God can do everything and anything, and it's, you know, I don't understand it. I mean, I've never died and come back, and <clears throat> we often say that, that we don't know, nobody's died and then come back, so as to be able to tell us what death is like. Um, but then we call about, talk about these near-death experiences. My question is, is it really death? Or is it just a religious experience of God? Um, a call to conversion in a moment of great vulnerability, in a moment of great need, in a great a moment of great physical distress. Is it really an experience of our Lord? Uh, experience of our Savior, which is calling us to Him, uh, and and asking, is it is it a moment of conversion? Is what I'm saying, is it a moment of conversion? So, I great I'm very grateful for this book, um, and if you have an interest in what they call near death experiences, um, then I advise you to take a look. You know, um, because it make, does make you stop and think. But I think it, once again, it is a reminder to me that Jesus will stop at nothing until he has us with him. And, and I think these moments uh, that he's had with people um, in moments of great distress have been moments when he's trying once again to bring those people to him, you know? His love is so great and all-consuming that he will stop at nothing, stop at nothing until he has us in the palm of his hand, okay? so. 
I guess basically that's one of my messages today. And, and I find it a message of great hope uh, during the month of the Holy Souls, you know, that nobody is beyond the scope or the, the mercy of the Lord uh, and that the Lord is always reaching out to us and bringing us to him, even when we've left this life, you know, that we journey towards him because of the faith that he has uh, poured into our hearts through our baptism. And so uh, I, I find increasingly uh, the month of uh, the Holy Souls to be a moment uh, of reflection, but also a moment of great joy, knowing that, you know, that, um, um, that there are so many loved ones that we have known and yet lost or think we've lost who are not lost. They're just on their way uh, to be with their Savior. And, um, and that Jesus um, has such love for each one of us that even now he, he will use every means possible to draw us to him. And that could be an religious experience. When you're in the church, something happens and you're transported somewhere else or in private prayer or even in your dreams. Um, but it's everything is to make you come to him, um, come to him and to know this huge love, which is described in the book as like um, a love which you can't put a name to, but you just know that it's like so immense and so endless and so all embracing. You just want more of it and you just want to go towards it. And that's Jesus. He's like, like a magnet, right? He's a magnet. Uh, and when we see him and we know him, um, all we want to do is go towards him, you know? So, um, I offer you this little book as a reflection today and um, make of it what you will. But I think that Jesus uses all of these little resources to, to help us deepen our faith uh, so that we might believe in him more. Okay, so um, November will soon be beyond us. Um, so make the most of it and um, ponder those people um, who are no longer with us. Uh, pray for them uh, and pray for yourselves. Um, that that we will might be open to every opportunity the Lord gives us uh, to change uh, and to know and to grow uh, and to be more committed to him in this life so as to be with him in the next. Anyway, that's all I have to say today. It's uh, Jude is asleep now. Yeah, it wasn't that interesting, right? Um, I'm on only on Spanish masses this weekend. Um, Father Augustine is having a week off, so... Uh, I'll be doing all Spanish, um, so um, I'll be at the 10 a.m. and the 12 noon. Uh, in the meantime, be joyful and keep the faith.